So in case you missed it, the other day we talked about what your off-season training should not look like. So think about that for a second. What should I not be doing for my off-season training? And really it came down to two big mistakes that most of you are making. Do you want to know what they are? Okay, I'll tell you. The two big mistakes are number one you do nothing and number two you try to do the same thing and a lot of times that's coming from a genuine place of hey I want to be the hardest worker I really want to have success so I'm going to just keep working so hard even though now I'm practicing with the team playing games and probably doing some off ice training with your team most of you are in the first group. You think your work is done because, yeah, but I now I have practice and now I have games and I don't want to be tired and worn out for practices and games. Or you just think your work's done. <laughs> and I know that most of you are in this first group because you see it every single year. Our guys come home, train for the off season with us, go back, join their team, come back in May. They are slower, they are fatter, and they are weaker when they come back because they haven't done the right kind of off season training. So it's kind of like, um, I'm trying to th remember my Greek mythology now, but the guy who constantly had to roll the rock up the hill and then it would roll back down and that was just he was do doomed to that for it for eternity I think his name was Sisyphus but it's exactly the same thing like they come home they work their asses off all summer they make great gains they're fast they're strong they're stable and then they they go to you know join their team and then they slowly start to lose all of that as you go and then they come back in May and we build it back up again only to lose it so that's kind of frustrating because you're probably making incremental gains season to season but you're not really maximizing your return so you know what I'm saying is imagine if you know we could build this off season and then and a lot of strength coaches hate it when you say oh we're gonna maintain they're like we're not tr training to maintain we're training to build well yeah I get it, but even if we can maintain, because what happens right now, like I'm telling you, is that guys lose their strength and their speed. So let's just say we can maintain those gains for the season, and then you come back, and then we can build again, and then you play the season, and then you come back and we build again. You know, that's a lot better than sort of doing this, 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 you know what I mean? So. We don't want to be the, the Sisyphus of, of the goaltending world. <laughs> this is my goal for you. I, I want you playing your worst hockey right now. Your worst hockey at the start of the season. I would way prefer you be the goalie that starts off maybe a little bit shaky or average and then just gets better and better and better. And as we get closer to playoffs, you're getting more and more of the starts. We get into those, you know, the, the coaches are looking at tournaments and it's like, okay, so if we make it to the championships, you know, we want this guy to play. So we're gonna back up and see who should start the first game so that we can have you starting the championship game. Um, you know, you can see your teammates' confidence in you, your coach's confidence in you, and even your confidence is building and building so that when you get to playoffs, you're feeling confident, comfortable, strong, stable, stamina that goes on for days, and you can just worry about playing the game, not surviving. The opposite is you start off great now, and then, you know, you gradually losing speed, losing some power, not keeping up with your stability work. Your body's getting beaten up and broken down a little bit as you head into playoffs so that you're kind of thinking, man, I hope I hope I can just make it through or, you know, or thinking, geez, I can't afford to get a tweak now because that, you know, that'll blow my chance and have me starting games on the bench. So that's what we want. We want you playing your worst hockey right now and then just gradually getting better and better and building momentum as the season goes on, kind of like what I think of as Binnington your season, you know, have that kind of trajectory rather than this kind of trajectory as we go. And that's all really nice and all. <laughs> but you're wondering, so okay, great. So 
what should I do? Tell me what I should actually be doing so that I can have that kind of season where I'm gaining momentum. And it's like anything, there's, there's uh, it depends is really one of the big answers, but I'm gonna try to map it out for you so you at least have some idea that, yeah, you know what, I'm on the right track, or like, woo, I am, wow, what I thought I should be doing is way off base. So let's look at first, it depends a little bit how often you're on the ice. Like if you play for a team and you're only on the ice maybe twice a week, and you have one or you know one practice and one game or one practice and two games and maybe you're not even playing the second game um, then you should probably be looking to be in the gym three times a week mobility let's jot this down um, this is I'm gonna go with the standard like you're on the ice three to four times a week, you're playing at a pretty high level, you're not doing your training just for fitness. You know, this isn't fitness training, this is goalie training. So you don't have to email me and say, oh, but I, I just play rec hockey and I really like to go to the gym every day because I like, because I don't want to, whatever, you know. It's like, that's fine, that's something different. I'm talking about those of you who are playing or trying to play at a high level and are really like, okay, what's the training I need to do just to maximize my performance on the ice? So that's, if you, if you just, you know, want, like going to the gym for general fitness and stuff, because, you know, that's, that's something different. So let's imagine that, yeah, you're on the ice three to four times a week, playing at a pretty high level, um, your games are important, um, and, but you want to sort of build that momentum as you go along, or at least not lose what you've gained in the off season. Here's, here's what I propose that you do. So you should still be doing strength training. Uh, if you do it the right way, it's not gonna burn you out or tire you out, even for practices. Um, that's gonna be a full body routine, but it will only be kind of two sets of exercises, going big after uh, max strength and peak power. And then as supplementals, it'll be some of your stabilization exercises, like um, you know your half kneeling, crease pushes, some of your specific hip internal rotation work, uh, those types of things. But it's only gonna take you about 30 minutes to get through that gym workout. Your mobility is a big part. And remember that mobility is a combination of flexibility uh, plus strength, flexibility plus control. So this isn't just doing your stretches. So if what you think of as your mobility training is still just really you, you know, getting on the floor and doing stretches and holding them for a minute or 30 seconds or three minutes or whatever it is, that's really just stretching. What we're talking about is mobility training, which increases your envelope of, of flexibility, but also gives you the strength and the control that you need in those length and positions. Because if I'm just stretching a muscle, like it's a, you know, a piece of toffee. All I'm doing is making it so that I can get myself into a position uh, where the muscle's in a really weak position and I have no control, which is kind of a recipe for injury. Uh, but also it's kind of thing then when you extend or have to do that, you know, desperation save and extend with your leg, that's it. You don't have any strength to kind of recover, get compact, get ready for your next save. So. Your mobility training should be five times a week. And that should include things like, you know, you've seen me post like FRC or LDOA or PRI. It, it isn't just stretching at all. Um, this will take you 20 to 30 minutes. So, and you can do that at the end of the day. It's, this isn't the same as your warm up before you go on the ice, completely different. Um, so that actually is gonna be a big bulk. But it encapsulates, it includes a lot of your prehab, your injury prevention, um, sort of your rotator cuff exercises for your hips. So that's a huge one. I say two times speed, and a lot of times we'll add the speed element right into your full body strength. But this isn't, again, like the summertime speed that we think of doing the accelerations and things like that. It's quick, it's getting, it's keeping that pop because we don't get a chance to do that all the time on the ice. Think of your practices. Most of your practices, not everyone's practice, is very stamina based. You know, you're really there for the shooters. It's like, three on two, three on two, you know, uh, PK all the time. And you're, and you're exhausted and you're crushed. So you can't, even though you're trying to move explosively, move with precision, you're just so fatigued that you're not expanding that envelope. 
you can be trying to move fast um, when you're fatigued, but you're never going to expand or maintain the power and the speed that you've built over the summer when you're fatigued. So this is doing when you're fresh. Um, and so two times a week, but that would be like 10 minutes. Uh, it'll be like two sets of two to three repetitions of really explosive exercises to keep what's called your high threshold motor units firing. So those are your big fast twitch muscles getting them explosive because you know, even if you train with your team, what does that workout look like? Well, you might say, well, we do plyometrics for power. How many reps do you do? I bet you're doing more than six repetitions. I bet you're doing eight, 10, 12 repetitions of squat jumps and calling that plyometrics and thinking that's building speed and power. And it's not, it's building stamina. Anything really over six reps is getting into stamina land a little bit when we talk about plyometrics and power development. Um, most of your off-ice training is running the stairs, doing burpees, doing a bunch of push-ups, doing a bunch of squats to make you tired so that you can feel like, oh yeah, I feel my legs are burning. That was a great workout. So the coach can see, you know, for the trainer, the coach can see like, okay, the kids are sweating. That's a good trainer. They're doing a good job. It's not really to build that speed and peak power. So. We need to sneak it in, but it'll only take about 10 minutes. And like I said, we can work it into your strength workout so that then some of your supplemental strength exercises can be the active recovery. So even when we add these two together, we're still only spending, you know, 30, <coughs> 30, maybe 35 minutes in the gym. So two times speed per week. For the stamina, I just put a question mark because it really depends. If you have two practices a week and one game, and you and your goalie partner alternate games, so you're only playing a game every other week, and maybe your practice, your coach just loves to talk and loves to draw things on the board, and you guys end up standing around a lot. You leave and you're not really fatigued. Then you probably better sneak in some stamina workout. These are gonna be repeated sprints, and I don't mean running sprints necessarily. I actually don't mind in season if you use the bike. I actually prefer maybe the elliptical because it gets you some hip extension, but um, then you probably need to do, add in, you know, one or two stamina workouts a week. But again, those would be about 20 minutes in duration. It's not going to be an hour-long stamina workout um, unless, yeah, like your team has three weeks off or something like that. But it's going to be um, repeated sprints, you know, bursts of sort of 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off, um, and the total workout time will be sort of 20 to 30 minutes. And we can do even do agility drills and movement drills within the context of that stamina training. Or, you know, if you do get quite a bit of good work on the ice, then we could use the bike or, or the elliptical for one of those workouts each week. Also take into account your team's workout, even though it's supposed to be a strength workout, it might actually be a stamina based uh, strength workout. And any training that you do on the ice with your individual goalie coach, because those are usually pretty good stamina sessions too. So I put a question mark, most of the Goalies I train at a higher level who are practicing consistently and practicing hard. Um, we don't really do stamina during the season. I guess that's another good point too is, you know, you need to, you need to practice at a high intensity. You can't just go out and dog it and practice and then think you're going to have, you know, the stamina and the speed that you want during game. So that's another, I'll take every opportunity to get your goalie specific stamina done during practice because, you know, those of you who've done, you know, even my workout, stamina workouts in the summer, nothing replaces being on the ice. Nothing simulates being on the ice other than being on the ice with your full gear. So. We'll leave that as a little wee question mark. So this is kind of how it'll roll. Two strengths, they're full body strength workouts, two sets, keeping the repetition range low on your big bang exercises, but using heavy loads to get those high threshold motor units. Keep that peak, pow peak strength, which then helps keep uh, peak power. Um, you'll also work in some of your stabilization exercises, some of your prehab drills into that. Five times a week at least will be your mobility training, which is different from just stretching a muscle. So we hardly do any stretching anymore. It's all sort of like FRC or LDOR or PRI or generating tension in those lengthened positions. Speed training, two times a week. 
This should not be a fatiguing workout. Speed is kind of fun. So you're just doing, you know, two to four repetitions of an exercise. It's not fatiguing. And then you're getting lots and lots of recovery. And usually I'll work in some um, stabilization or prehab exercises for that active recovery so we make the most of our time. But these shouldn't be fatiguing. So you can do that on the day of a practice, no problem at all. Uh, and then stamina is a little bit funny. It depends a bit how much you're playing, how much you practice, what your practices are like, what your team off ice is like. If you have questions about stamina, you can always DM me um, and I'll, I'll try to help point you in the right direction. But that is what your in-season training should work look like. Uh, if you want to just make it easy and just know that you're doing the right stuff rather than try to cobble it together uh, from the interwebs and articles that I've posted, if you just want, like, Maria, what's the program we should do? Then it's the Shutout Academy that you're after because it depends on the season. So starting in September, we're going to an in-season training program. And that's everything, your strength, your speed, your stamina, your mobility. Plus, there's a private Facebook group where you can go on and ask questions or, you know, guys go on and say, um, and when I say guys, I mean guys and girls. Like, but <laughs> um, they go on and say, hey, we have a practice on Monday and Wednesday and play a game Friday, Saturday. This is what I'm thinking for my training schedule. Can you look at it and tell me what you think? And then I'll, I'll adjust it or if it needs it or say, yeah, that looks per that's exactly what you should do. So that's the scoop. Uh, the early bird list, uh, I'll put a link down below where you can get into the early bird list. Um, that just gives you 24 hours advance notice over everyone else, so you're pretty much guaranteed to get a spot. Um, and I'm going to give you your first 30 days for a buck. And if you're watching this after September, first, then forget about it <laughs> because uh, we're going to open it um, August 28th until August 30th, only for 72 hours. If you're on the early bird list, you get in on August 27th and then it won't open again until the end of December. It only opens three times a year for enrollment. So that's the scoop on that. But this is what your in-season training should look like. So don't do nothing. Don't try to do the same thing you did in the off-season. Uh, don't end up slower, fatter, weaker come playoffs. We want you to gain momentum as you go through the season. We want you playing your worst hockey right now, your best hockey come playoffs. I will catch you later. Cheers.